thank you guys for talking to us. I really appreciate it. You know, we've got to address the big white elephant that's in the universe right now. The lockdown that's happened in the entire universe. Um, you guys in the UK, in and out, in and out. Some of you are upset with Mr. BJ. Some of you are not. How is it like in London or in the in the UK right now with the lockdown? How have you guys survived it? It's definitely a bit confusing here. Uh, and a bit frustrating because it keeps it keeps changing. So so we never really know what kind of plans we we can or can't make. But of course it's you know it's been a very long and strange period of time for everyone and you know of course a lot of people have lost their lives and you know most people have not been able to see their friends and see their family and uh, you know hopefully we're you know coming towards the end of it but um it's definitely a little odd. So anyway, how have you guys managed to actually still create music? with um, you guys being in London and then you're not unable to travel unless though in UK you can travel to the US or however. Since the lockdown started there have been occasions where we've managed to get together where situations allow it so we spent a bit of time in Sweden last summer when there were no restrictions there and, and we were allowed to travel in and out freely but very short periods of time and whenever we did get together we were always everyone testing everyone strict bubbling and social distancing and so all of that stuff that has become very uh commonplace for for everyone in the world um this year so we did we did one session there we managed to get together in october in in germany and then we have been able to do a little bit of stuff here in london as well but it just makes things very different but what it has taught us is that we're able to be quite efficient with our time and we can work separately but then when we come together we're extremely extremely uh, focused and extremely aware that we don't have much time. So it just makes us really, there's a sense of urgency and pace to the work, to the recording and the decision making, which is really quite exciting. Higher Power though, was that uh, recorded remotely or did you guys get together for that? It was partly recorded remotely, um, but we finished it off really in a recording session in Hansa studio in, in Berlin. So that's really when it kind of it, it solidified in that in that session in Germany. How did you guys work separately? Like, did you guys call each other on the phone? Like, okay, this is the beat that I want. Okay, now you play this tune. I mean, there has to be some kind of communication. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have our, a studio in London and, and Chris is based in Los Angeles a lot of the time and he works over there. And it's the digital age that we live in. We can we, we can all try ideas separately and then we just share the files across to each other and review them and discuss them. It was particularly important for us, you know, during the, this kind of pandemic period to, uh, to remain in touch and have constant dialogue. So we would have a Zoom call once a week with the you know, with all of us to catch up on whatever out. whatever out. topics needed to be discussed, you know, whether it's music or planning, you know, planning things in the future. So it actually became quite an efficient process. So touring is still an option, yeah? Let's just say the world returns okay. to normal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we set ourselves a target of making sure that when we come back to touring, that it was something that we could stand by in terms of decreased impact on the environment. And so it's quite a big challenge. And this year or sort of 18 months of not being able to travel much has given us a lot of time to really focus on some of these decisions, some of these technologies and logistical kind of planning that allows us to, to have a significantly smaller impact on the environment when we do tour. So definitely we're working towards that, but as to when and how it's going to happen, I think we're just in the, we don't really know. I, I think one of the things that we have learned is that we need to be flexible and adaptable. I think like most people this year. The world has gone through a similar thing, a pandemic. You have lots of fans here. Is there any kind of encouragement that you give? I mean, because we've lost lives here in Malaysia as well. People have lost jobs. Uh, depression, anxiety, everything's kicked in. What kind of encouragement can we give? Yes, I, I suppose our, our message to uh, to people that enjoy our music out there in Malaysia and the wider world is that we're just so grateful for the patience that you've shown and for how, you know, we fully recognize how difficult it's been for so many people this year. And our sympathies are with you all if you've lost anyone or if you've been impacted in, in negative ways by this pandemic. And we hope to provide you with some more music at some point, something that uh, we found that music has been very helpful to us in this time, creating it, but also listening to it. So our message is, um, if you find any kind of solace in the music that we're writing, then we're incredibly grateful um, to each and every one of you. And we hope to be able to come out. When the COVID fates allow, um, we'll be back in Asia and in Malaysia. Um, we can't wait to come back. and. Um, yeah, thank you for thank you for sticking with us all these years. Thank you so thank much, you. Will. Thank you so much, Guy. We'll be counting down the days until you guys will be rocking a stadium in KL. Yes, okay? absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank Bless you, you so guys. Much. Thank you. Stay so much. safe.